Hi, welcome to another program. Now, this program is going to be very interesting. We are making the transition from teaching you the tenor pan, or, as I have been informed, the soprano pan. And we are shifting across to developing your ability to play the double second, or the tenor pan. And of course, you'll get a chance to understand what those things mean, because Darren will be explaining. So today's lesson, we are going to get to understand the double second pan, and we're going to make the comparisons and make the relationship between the double second and the tenor pan or soprano pan. Well, let me just get you, especially my keyboard people. Remember, middle C is where we start to work, C is where everything happens. And in order for us to understand well the shifts in the pan, we want you to understand that the soprano pan or the tenor pan exists in this area. But the double tenor exists in this area. We're going down. The lowest note is an F sharp below middle C. So whereas on the, on the low C tenor, the lowest note is middle C, in this case we're going down the lowest note on the double tenor, which is F sharp. So I turn you across to Darren. Well, today we're going to introduce you guys to the double second pan. Um, one of the more versatile pans in the steel band family in terms of its range. The double second pan has the range of the highest male voice in a choir. And that's the context we should, we should really be focusing on in terms of the instrument to make it um, uniform with conventional, in conventional circles. So this is the double second pan, which is the highest male voice being a tenor. And as Louis said, it starts, the lowest note is uh, F sharp below middle C. <laughs> And it goes all the way up to the third octave B, which on the tenor pan would be the second octave B. The double second pan, you use a longer stick in terms of how you reach for the notes. You need a longer stick and you need more rubber on the tip of your sticks because you have a larger note surface for each note. The pan is constructed in a way that you use two particular scales. And I want to demonstrate that on the tenor pan as it relates to the double second pan. So I move across to the tenor pan. The double second pan comprises of two whole tone scales. There are 12 musical notes, and each whole tone scale consists of six notes. The double second pan comprises of two whole tone scales. There are 12 musical notes, and each whole tone scale consists of six notes. The double second pan comprises of two whole tone scales. There are 12 musical notes, and each whole tone scale consists of 
six notes on the left side of the double second pan you start off with C the C whole tone scale you skip one note and you go to D skip another note you go to E another note again F sharp and G sharp and B flat C the C whole tone scale you skip one note and you go to D skip another note you go to E another note again F sharp and G sharp and B flat C the C whole tone scale you skip one note and you go to D skip another note you go to E another note again F sharp and G sharp and B flat so that C whole tone C D E F sharp G sharp B flat and if I move across to the double second pan the notes on the left side of the instrument is the C whole tone scale as well C D E F sharp G sharp B flat and you go back to the octave C C D F sharp, G sharp, B flat, and you go back to the octave C. C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, B flat, and you go back to the octave C. So just like on the tenor pan, Just like on the tenor pan, so just like on the tenor pan, that's the notes that make up the left side of the double second pan. On the right side of the double second pan, you have a C sharp whole tone scale another six notes represented on the tenor pan you start at c sharp skip one e flat skip another note f again g skip another note a and then the final note b start at c sharp skip one E flat skip another note F again G skip another note A and then the final note B start at C sharp skip one E flat skip another note F again G skip another note A and then the final note B one two three four five six notes C sharp whole tone scale across on the double second pan C sharp E flat F G, A, B. So C sharp, E flat, F, G, A, B. And it's very important that we understand how this relates in terms of the two instruments. When you go right 
and you skip a note on the tenor pan that represents the left side of your double second pan. And when you start from on the left, with the C sharp whole tone scale on the tenor pan, that represents the right side of your double second pan. When you go right and you skip a note on the tenor pan, that represents the left side of your double second pan. And when you start from on the left, with the C sharp whole tone scale on the tenor pan, that represents the right side of your double second pan. When you go right and you skip a note on the tenor pan, that represents the left side of your double second pan. And when you start from on the left, with the C sharp whole tone scale on the tenor pan, that represents the right side of your double second pan. that we understand that concept. While playing the double second pan, you always want to try, except for when you're rolling or you're playing a chord on one side of the pan, that you distribute your hand movement evenly. Your left hand plays the left side pan, and the right hand plays the right side pan. So if you're playing, like how we did the chromatic on the tenor pan, you start from the lowest note, Notice the movement, left, right, left. So it's very important to develop that dexterity, that wrist movement with playing the double second pan. Very important that your hands function independently. All the other concepts that we spoke about in terms of rolling, rolling on a chord, etc., etc., playing each note at the center of the note, they all still apply to this particular pan. But because of the, 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 the fact that it's two drums, it's very important that we play each drum. Left side, left hand, right side, right hand. Tell me something, Darren. Is it that we need to think in two parts to play two drums? Actually, it's one, it's one instrument. Um, and we should focus on it like that. Um, your approach to it should be that these two drums can make up one instrument. Right. So what we're saying, friends, on the tenor pan, the soprano pan, which is the highest voice in the choir, the soprano, both sides of the pan are played together. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Your hands are right here. But Darren was explaining, and I want to remind you, that the right side of the tenor pan, of the soprano pan, is the... C-hole tone scale. C-hole tone scale, which is now... The left side of the double second. Right. I, I, I want us to reinforce that a little bit. The right side of, the, of your soprano pan, C-hole tone scale, is the left the left of your double second pan. Right. And the C-sharp whole tone scale represents the right side of the double second pan. So actually, the man, person playing the double second, is he opposite? Is, is it an opposite I'm hearing? Um, yes and no. I mean, the, the hand movement for the whole tone scales on each, on, on, on the double tenor, on the double, on the tenor pan, sorry, is all going to the right, you skip one to the right. But it starts on the C, on the middle C, and then it goes. But the C sharp whole tone scale starts on the left side of the pan simply because of the positioning of the C sharp note. And then you go right as well, skipping one note on the instrument at all times. Um, this offers you the ability to move in terms of the note placement, left, right, because of the, 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 the placements of the note chromatically, you are 
afforded the opportunity to play left, right, left, right, which is an easier approach to playing an instrument. I mean, it's great that the pan has evolved to where things are being done correctly musically, in a, in a musical sense, in terms of where the note placements are. So it makes it easier for the pans to be played and, and therefore forwarding the whole process of standardization of the instruments where I could learn to play pan in South and fall in in a tongue band and the pan basically is the same because of the note placements. Very good. Well friends, we are taking our time through this to get you to understand the differences and the similarities between the soprano pan and the double second. As I was saying, friends, this program, we introduced the double second, yes. It's not the double tenor. It's a popular error that we make, and I'm making it, so I want to just correct it for you. Um, in understanding this the role that the double tenor plays. Darren, what, is, what role does the double tenor play in a steel band? Well, the double second is one of the most versatile pans, as I said before, in terms of its range. It affords you six notes low, lower in tone on the middle C in relation to the tenor pan. On the tenor pan, the lowest note is middle C, as we said, which is represented by C here on the double second pan. On the double second pan, you have six notes lower in tone. You could go B, below middle C, then you go B flat, A, G sharp, G, F sharp. And in some bands, you would even get a lower F or a lower E. And to do that, they would eliminate some of the higher notes in the middle of the pan. But the basic setup of the instrument is the same. Demonstrating again the notes that are lower. So I'm going to start from the lowest F sharp and I'm going to get to the tenor pan and from the low C and take it straight up so you get a sense of where the instruments come from in relation to one another. <laughs> You have five very high notes on the tenor pan. In steel band arranging, the double second would traditionally use as a, co a chord pan or a pan that played harmony, accompaniment. But as the instrument evolved and as more pans were added to the steel band family, the role of the double second pan changed in most steel bands. Now they play melody, they play harmony, they play counter melodies. Sometimes you'd find the double second pan being used to enhance uh, a passage of music that the guitars might play or the cellos might play. It would play to strengthen the front line meaning um, the tenor pans or the double tenor pans. I mean, it's a very versatile instrument and it's widely used as a solo instrument as well because, again, of the range of notes that it has. You find a lot of people playing the double second pan and they accompany themselves. They would play the melody. can be done as well on the tenor pan 
But in terms of the warmness of the tone, I mean, you get a whole different feel from the double second pan. Well, that's interesting because the question of voicing is what I would like my musician friends already to understand. That the, that the different pans are set up in, a, in different ranges and they, they blend. In other words, the, the top of the double second is the lower end of the tenor. And the double second goes down below middle C to F sharp, which means that it's going down in the lower ranges, where it will blend with another instrument. So important for us to understand in terms of that warmth that Darren described is the voicing. And that voicing is what gives music its emotional vitality, what gives it its interest, what gives it a mosaic of, of energy. So Darren, let's, let's just Let's just demonstrate to them in the same pattern that you're playing. Um, maybe the same pattern. And let's see if we can play it with the different modulations, the different emotional vitalities, and see if we can get that message. So I, I'm going to play like.
the final voice. understand voicing, you are getting that range and difference in pitch. This is where we bring our other colleague, Mr. Bruce Roberts, to join Darren. Bruce is going to play the soprano pan, and Darren will play the double second. Yes, that's the correct thing. And we're going to play along a little melody, clearly, so that you all will get an understanding of the pans as they blend in an ensemble, but more importantly, I want you to listen for the difference in voices. Join us.
Jesus. Wonderful. Well, friends, you have blended the pans, you have demonstrated the pans to you, you have listened to the various voices, you have seen the movement of the double second supporting the tenor and the tenor ramaging, playing the melody and shifting back to support the double second. Darren, double second. Well, friends, we have tried to introduce you to those two voices 
of two very important pans in the steel band family. And from this program on, we'll be continuing to teach you the role, the functions, the techniques and principles of playing the double second pan. I'll be going out this program demonstrating those voices with Darren and Bruce. So have fun. On the pattern. 